Hello art friends, my name is Fleshwad, and welcome to another Drawing Your Creepypasta OCs video. I have three Creepypasta OCs in this video. Our first OC was submitted by Magentha123 and is called Insanity. My name is Liz. I am 13 years old and I am now going to tell the story of my sister, Ivy. She is also known as Insanity, and that is not without reason. We lived in a normal family, although normal is not the right word. Our father hit us very often and said that we were not good enough. Our mother was against it. She was really a sweetheart. We also often went to our grandmother, the mother of our father's side. Ivy trusted Grandma the most because she could say everything to Grandma. In our home, it was not normal to tell someone you were dealing with something because our father always said that we shouldn't complain. Grandma always liked Ivy's long hair and she often made braids from it. Grandma would cry if Ivy lost her hair. School did not make the situation much better. She only had one friend, Alice, but she did things very often with people other than Ivy. So when she went to school in the morning, she was alone and would draw. When she got home, she was beaten all the time if she was downstairs, and otherwise she would cry upstairs. This was going on from the moment she went to this school. I noticed that things began to be worse with her. She would do weird movements and stayed upstairs often. One day we ate dinner and my mother was called. We got the news that our grandmother died. Ivy began to cry even though she never did that when my father was around. My father hit her in the face and said stop crying. You know I had hoped for brave sons but I get weak daughters who can't do anything. I tried to make you harder by hitting you, but it does not help. Ivy angrily shouted, I knew you didn't want us. At that moment, my father took the scissors out of the drawer and cut Ivy's hair while he said, You will learn to contradict me. The rest happened very quickly. Ivy took the scissors from my father's hand and stabbed him. When she was done, she laughed very loudly. It was very scary, very loud, and very insane. She began cutting and eating the organs from my father's body. My mother called. Ivy, what are you doing, and why? Ivy answered. I take revenge on the one that made my life a hell. Can't you see that? Although that may be normal for you, you have never done anything against it. Then she threw the scissors at my mother. They were thrown right into my mother's heart. I cried. Ivy, please stop. This is not you. Ivy replied. You do not know who you mean, but I'm not sure. My name is Insanity. She began making weird movements with her neck and scratching herself in the face until it started to bleed. She started laughing. I noticed she began to go crazy and called the police. Ivy saw and said, Do you want me to go? I'm not good enough for you either. I answered, Of course you are. Ivy laughed very hard, just like she did when she murdered my dad. Then she ran through the door into the woods. The police came and I told them everything. My mom and dad were buried and I now live with my uncle and aunt. Ivy was only seen once after that, in the house of Alice to get revenge because she did nothing with her. Alice did not survive. Her mother described the murderer as having gray skin, gray hair, gray clothing, and five scratches on her face. So if you meet someone like that, then run away. 
Otherwise, you will not survive. And that was the story of insanity. Thank you so much for submitting your OC Magantha 123. I hope that you like it. I had so much fun drawing this one. And I love that it is basically just black and white, or black, or gray and white, sorry. I love the color scheme, and so I just added a little bit of red just to kind of contrast with uh, against the gray and also to blend with these scratches on the face. Our next OC was submitted by MGGD. This creepypasta is called It Watches Me Sleep. The main character is a young girl around 14 with long black hair and blue eyes. Her name is Rose. Ever since Rose was a little girl, she couldn't fall asleep properly. She would wake up screaming for her mother and father, telling them not to leave her alone, or telling them about a strange hooded figure in a fox mask that was covered in blood. Her parents began to worry and told the police that someone broke into their daughter's bedroom. Rose explained that he came every night in his ankle-length jacket covered in blood. The police asked, what does his face look like? Rose replied, I don't know, he always wears a fox mask. The police officer's face turned a pale white. All the color was drained from his face. He explained to Rose's parents that his own children saw the same thing before they went missing. Rose's parents became overprotective and didn't want their child leaving the house. They did everything they could to keep her safe, but after seven years, her parents woke up to screams of immeasurable pain and psychotic laughter. Rushing to her room, they saw something no parent should ever see. Their daughter was being eaten alive by a man in an ankle-length jacket. Wiping the blood off of his face, he looked to the girl's parents and said in a dark tone, Does mother and father want to join? He then leapt to both of them, stabbing them both brutally, and then finishing his meal. Life of the others, and that has only just begun. And that was the short creepypasta, It Watches Me Sleep. I really like this one, I think it's super creepy. I tried to do some like... I don't know, experimental stuff with the design. And then I decided to throw that out the window and make the fox into a fox-human hybrid. Uh, I think it just works well better instead of making him more, like, inhuman. I really like this creepypasta. I would like to, I would like for the writer to expand on it. I think it's a really cool idea, very creepy as well. Um, I also think it could make a good animatic. Maybe this will be the one that I, I attempt. I don't know. Probably not. I probably won't because I'm horrible at them. But maybe. If I do, I might attempt this one. I really, really like this original creepypasta. So thank you so much, MGGD, for submitting it. Our last creepypasta OC was submitted by Pure Fandom Trash. Name only known as she or her. It's funny, you know? People hear a story that is so strange, so absurd, yet people believe it, as though they are still small children who will believe everything they hear. That's what could have happened to me and my friend. Well, ex-friend, I guess. It would be all over the news, but my family doesn't want random people asking questions. So I got lucky. She was a strange girl, very silent and reserved, yet very open once you got to know her. We met over mutual interests. We both really liked the same stuff that most people were just not into. We became close friends instantly. She was like a soulmate, in a friendship sort of way. After a while, she got sick, and I got worried for her, but then she started to ignore me. I'd call her, no answer. It was the same thing for texting and FaceTime. 
If I walked up to her at school or in public, she would just walk away. One day, I got a call from her. It had been about a week and a half since she had stopped talking to me, so I picked up immediately. Over the phone, in a low voice, she told me to come to her house at around 6. Now, of course I debated on whether or not I should go, but I was desperate to know what was wrong and she didn't sound threatening. She had just sounded sad, like she'd been crying. So I go over to her house. I should probably explain something right now. I had been recording my friend to show others how strange she was acting before she stopped talking to me. So I was recording as I walked over to her house. There were no cars in the driveway, but I somehow knew she was home. I let myself in as I usually did and all the lights were on in the house. I walked over to her room and saw no one in there. Then everything went black. I woke up in a hospital with my parents next to me. I had been hit over the head with something. I then remembered I was recording and asked if they saw my phone near me. They said no. When I got home that same day, I found my phone on my bed. I went to the recording of that day before and saw her. She hit me over the head with a metal pipe and ran off. I showed my parents this and we went to the police station. My friend went missing that same night and they said how the family was looking for her, but they couldn't remember her name. All pictures they had of her were damaged in a way so you could not see her face. I then realized that it was the same for everyone. No one remembered her name, or face. Who just forgets everything about someone? The police said that they aren't opening a case for what is going on. They told off the family for the prank and thought that they had just sent us to continue the joke. I don't blame them. My parents and I sound insane. Even worse, about three weeks later, her entire family was found dead. Nanny cams in the house showed how the dad killed everyone and then himself. He had no reason to, he just did. Right now I'm working with a few people who make amateur documentaries for YouTube to try to explain what happened. If the police won't investigate, I will. And that was the creepy pasta story submitted by Pure Fandom Trash. This one I really enjoyed. It's really, really weird. Um, just like the idea of there being a person who does this crazy, insane thing and then no one even remembers them. That is just creepy. Um, it's a really, really interesting story. I really liked it. Thank you for submitting your OC. So, I've been doing this for a while now, so I just want to kind of touch on some basics. Um, someone was asking if these are, if the OCs that I pick are completely random, and so no, they're not. Um, I think I might have said before that they were, but as I've been doing them more often, I do go through and I read each story. So I'll have about 10 stories and then I'll go through and decide which three that I would like to add together or which two if the stories are too long. Um, but basically how I pick them is if the story is one complete and if the OC is complete. So if you have a description of the OC, that's even better. That that raises your chances of being picked. Um, some of you, like two, the two in this video, um, Magenta123 and Pure Phantom Trash, both have pictures of their OCs, which also help along with the description. And of course, I, like I said, I do read through the stories, so I'm bound to pick ones that kind of have more interest to me because these are all just, um, to you, they're random. So, uh, I want to make sure that I'm reading the creepiest stories or the most interesting stories to make a good video. If you do want me to draw your OC and I haven't yet, you could commission me if that's something that you're interested in doing. And if that sounds like something you'd like to do, then you can DM me on Instagram or Twitter at FleshwadYT. Um, that's the only way to make sure for sure 100% that your OC will be in the video. Other than that, it is completely random to you, um, but I do pick these stories that I'm going to read. 
if that makes sense. But yeah, just for a better shot, um, you can also repost your story on each video. I don't mind that at all because there are a lot of um, submissions and so sometimes they do get lost. But I do try to go back to older videos and, and look through those stories as well to make sure that I'm not missing any. But anyways, yeah, I hope you guys liked this video. I had so much fun drawing and reading these. I love to draw your creepypasta OCs because they give me inspiration when I'm not inspired. And when I, it's easier to be told like, hey, this is what it looks like. And then for me to draw it instead of having to come up with my own design when I'm not feeling inspired. If you want another Creepypasta OC drawing video, please make sure to hit the like button. It helps let me know that you guys like these types of videos. As for the OCs in this video, if your OC was in this video, I hope that you liked my reading of your story and my drawing. Um, yeah. That's gonna be the end of this video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Until the next video, bye!